everybody, this is Praxis, and I'm back on site today doing a lot of board work, just cutting up boards for interior walls and things. But uh, I want to show you out here first what's uh, beginning to happen on the outside of the structure with the wires. This is a bunch of 12 gauge wires, you can tell because these are color coded yellow, uh, starting to run on the outside. That's something a little bit uh, different about this uh, house kit uh, approach to the wiring, is that while there's plenty of wires running through the interior partition walls and everything, a lot of the wires are traveling on the outside. They'll come out here and they'll kind of you know, run between the piece of strapping, go around corners, kind of daisy chain outlet to outlet that, uh, and, and get around a lot that way. That's fine in this area and many areas, but uh, this approach to wiring isn't cool in some places. I know that people at the kit company said that there are starting to be some uh, you know, jurisdictions where the electrical inspector is not cool with this approach. The, the fear being that you know, later on you're going to have exterior boards going across here, and if someone wants to just put a screw randomly into the exterior boards, they could go into the wires. Uh, we have a little bit of a potential for that, uh, you know, wherever uh, there are uh, these pieces of strapping because as the exterior boards go along, there's going to be screws, you know, running in straight lines. And if someone did want to attach something to the house, it's sensible that you would, you know, want to anchor it to a place where clearly the boards are anchored. There's something behind it instead of just randomly just going through the middle of a board. Uh, so to get around that, there's two different approaches. One is that uh, whenever wires are going under here, you could put a metal... Um, a pad here so that you can't screw through, uh, you know, a shield. Uh, what we're going to be doing though is actually uh, taking the wires and we're digging underneath the foam so when the uh, uh, when the wires are passing under something that you might conceivably want to screw into, they are getting enough distance from it that it's not going to be an issue. So that's, uh, that's uh, kind of our approach to this. Uh, but like I said, uh, what I'm doing today, I'm not doing wiring. My dad's going to be back to, uh, tomorrow. We're going to be doing some more wiring. I'm just doing uh, interior boards, and uh, I'm really kind of getting to the, the end of that. I mean, I, I've got piles of boards kicking around next to different walls. We can't sheath up the walls yet because we're still waiting for the electrical inspection, uh, but I, I can pre-cut a lot of it, and uh, that's what I've been kind of doing today, just taking pieces of lumber and... Uh, I've got, I'm juggling it in my head at this point, you know, one wall is 35 and a half inches wide, there's another one that's 40 inches wide, I've got a 79 and a half inch wall, so I'm kind of taking the pieces of lumber and measuring them out and trying to minimize how much scrap I have at the end, so I can kind of pack up the most number of usable pieces into a piece. I'm just about to grab the last one right here, I just made a mark, and I'll just cut it right on the mark. <laughs> So this is a 16 foot board and that is the amount of scrap that I have left from it in the end and it made uh, you know a couple 35 and a half inch boards, a 40 inch board, I might have already pulled some in earlier. But the idea is I'm really trying to minimize scrap so that I can get uh, as much material uh, for the house out of the material that I have you know kicking around. The goal is to have a lot of uh, you know full complete boards at the end of this so I can use them for other projects in the future. <sighs> Once again, finish up with this one. <laughs> That's it. Thanks for watching.